founders of Shopping Green with three hours, and we are a marketplace for sustainable goods. So I'm sure you guys all went to, to Bali recently, uh, but yeah, uh, have, you, have you seen what, how Bali looks like after uh, a big storm? Uh, so, so this is what it looks like. This is like Kuta Beach, so like one of the super popular beaches. And this has just been a, a big storm at night, and then all the plastic basically just goes on the, on the beach. And then uh, in Bali, actually, they, they uh, clean up 100 tons of, of plastic every day. There are like, people that are assigned to, to do that on all the beaches. Um, and, and so, I mean, that, that's basically the issue. But thank God, there is also an opportunity here. Um, the opportunity is that in Southeast Asia, we are actually at the heart of the problem. So uh, mismatched plastic in Southeast Asia is the, I mean, we are, Southeast Asia is the biggest polluting uh, region in the world in terms of plastic, ahead of China, despite the fact that we have in Southeast Asia two times less people. And compared to the US, for example, uh, which is half the population of Southeast Asia, I mean, there are three times less uh, managed, uh, mismatched plastic that ends up in the ocean, in like landfills, or, or wherever. Um, wherever. Uh, the other good thing is that Southeast Asia is also one of the most active reg uh, regions in terms of regulations. So in Singapore, just in the last 12 months, they've introduced a mandatory waste reduction reporting, uh, so that all businesses now, uh, from a certain size, they have to report somehow uh, a plan. How are they going to reduce their waste? Uh, they also introduced a carbon tax early this year, so now they have to you know, pay a, a tax based on uh, how much CO2 they, they emit and the CO2 footprint. They're also now talking as a pay-as-you-waste tax, where instead of just paying, you know, a kind of uh, having waste management uh, and uh, included in your, your taxes, uh, they will have a separate tax where they, they kind of weigh uh, how much you as an individual or business you are gonna waste and then you just pay a tax based on that. Um, and uh, they also introduced like mandatory end of life treatment of electronic waste. So from, um, I think it's in, in a few years now they've introduced this. Uh, all uh, manufacturers of electronic appliance will have to co collect back and be responsible for uh, the, the waste of the, you know, like for example, if you've got a laptop, they have to, they're really responsible of you know, collecting back the used laptop and, and recycling it. Uh, there's also a mandatory food packaging report. There's also now 2019 is a, a zero waste year in Singapore. So there are lots of initiatives around that that they're, they're trying to do. And you could think like, yeah, Singapore is like, you know, the, the, the richer country in the area, but actually other countries also have, are doing things about it. So Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, all have pledged to, uh, to uh, ban single-use plastics on different terms um, so from in, the, in the 2020s. However, today, if you want to switch to sustainable products, there are still a few issues, right? So where are you going to find those products? Usually, you, when you buy it, it's quite opportunistic. If you see one, well, you're going to buy it, but there's no real place where you can all find it at one place. The other thing is the price. So often uh, sustainable products are quite new, maybe more for like hipster people, so they can charge a premium pricing, uh, which then basically uh, will discourage the masses from really buying those products. And then reliability. So actually, how do you know that the products you're buying are actually sustainable? You know, like lots of these these uh, big brands, you know, say, oh, better for the environment, but then actually, first, sometimes it's, it's not proven, or sometimes it's not even true, or sometimes it's just, you know, it's just, they make a statement based on something totally insignificant. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that's a bit the issue. So what we want to do is we are doing a, a platform where you can buy uh, all the sustainable goods. And so what we're trying to do is, one, we're trying to, to uh, basically look for all suppliers of sustainable products around the world. Uh, we look at, okay, which are the best products and, and we're trying to you know, negotiate hard prices with them to get good prices. Um, and then we, we just basically direct all the, all the customers to, to these best, best suppliers, best in class suppliers. Uh, the other thing we're trying to, to, to solve is to make sure that the products that they have, uh, that the suppliers have, are actually sustainable. So how are we going to do that? So we, we take a lot of data points about the product, you know, the materials they're gonna use, uh, for example, about the suppliers, which technology are they gonna use, you know, what energy are they using, et cetera, what are their policies. Uh, we also use certifications, external certifications, uh, and then we process that into like a, a sustainability impact report, where basically we can uh, analyze for every product, well, that's the impact on the environment, and then we can also do that for customers because once customers come online and buy stuff, we can say, okay, well, instead of buying, you know, the traditional product, now you've bought this product, so 
this is like your, your impact that you have on by buying this product. Um, so the plan is, on, on the more uh, business side, the plan is first to, to target for, for businesses and we'll start with uh, FMB companies. So, I mean, you know, in, in Singapore, you got a lot of, I mean, a lot of takeaway stuff and they all use this, this often these cups and, and everything takeaway. So these are, all, this will be our first target. Uh, also, also companies like that have pantries, like tech companies. Um, and then the, the next thing, once we, you know, we see that we, we identify the good products, we also expand to, to consumers where they can also then, then buy those products. Um, so yeah, one of the items we, we said was really the, the price. So, uh, and, and this is what we're gonna focus on a little bit uh, today as well. Uh, and I'll let you pin uh, talk about that. Maybe you could, yeah. just yeah, yeah. ask a question. Just so I, in my mind, yeah. I understand what exactly you guys do. So is your, your, your major presence would be online? Yeah, so okay. yeah. So, am I, or you, yeah. are you gonna market otherwise? So we're gonna do two things. So one online, but a lot of these businesses, they they are still traditional businesses. So they don't always like to go online, they always check it out. So there will be, of course, a part where we'll have to, you know, go physically to these guys, go through like organizations like the Singapore Business Foundation that, that's kind of, uh, communicates, I mean, that's like a channel to communicate to all these guys, meet maybe like the, the professionals of the sector, uh, like to do talks in their associations, there are to also, you know, tell them that we exist. Um, so your channels yeah. to those yeah. businesses are those two things, yeah. face to face and, and online? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like a social enterprise is different from a normal business in that it has a, a, a normal business is main goal is to do what? To make money. Make money, to make a profit. Social enterprises, some of them do make profits, some of them don't, right? Um, but they also have sort of a different goal, typically. Okay, so what would that be for you guys? So, so it's really the, the sustainability impact. So basically, if we go back, uh, you know, one slide or two, yeah. So we, we talked about computing and understanding what's going to be the, the impact of a product versus you know sustainable product versus its non-sustainable alternative so what we want to do is kind of maximize that sustainable impact uh, of course the, the objective is also that we kind of self-sustain uh, and that we don't live on, on you know like uh, subsidies um, so these will be the two objectives so in the end, you hope your goal would, your goal, one of your goals would be to just minimize the, the, yeah. the, the environmental impact yeah. and such. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, other questions about this? Just for Yeah. So initially, you're bringing the sustainable businesses to other businesses that are interested in buying that and selling to their customers. Right? Yeah. So one, we, we look at all the suppliers, so we identify them around the world. Uh, sometimes there are bigger suppliers, but sometimes, often actually, they are, they're not. Because it's more like young people that you know, are caring about this, so they decide, oh, I wanna start a company that just makes sustainable goods. So compared to like a, a huge you know, multinational, I mean, they're so small. Um, so what we're trying to do is first, we're trying to look for these guys and, and bring them on a platform. Um, that's the first service, and then the second service is like analyze these guys and kind of verify and guaranteeing that these are best in their category. Yeah. So I, I, I have another yeah. question. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking for a business, like let's say it's SAS, we're not really a business, but if, if you know we wanted to go green, yeah. Uh, one of the problems for that for us would be knowing whether or not it actually makes a difference. Right, so if we start to use, to you know, adopt more sustainable type products, and then but trying to figure out whether or not that actually makes a difference is a hard thing to do. Yeah. Is that sort of what you might do for us? So, um, 
So when we look at sustainability, I think there are several you know, several stakeholders. First, there is the, um, the supplier that makes a product, you know, like and the product you buy is the product sustainable. Then there is a consumer, you know, because you're also responsible for how you use that product. And then there is that kind of the government that takes care of the, the waste management. So what we want to do is we want to to make sure that at least the first part of the product and suppliers, that's sustainable. Uh, of course, like the part of the consumer, if you buy like a, a great product and then you decide to like throw it away immediately or, or you know, burn it, I mean, uh, we cannot, you know, we cannot guarantee that. Or, or if the government doesn't have like the facility to, to recycle it, that's another issue. Uh, what we want to do is read the first, you know, product and supplier part. That's what we want to You intend to work with the Singapore government to necessarily pro, uh, improve sustainability in other ways beyond just the businesses and like sustainable products for consumers. Or yeah, or definitely. I think uh, I mean I think that's that's great. I mean I, th I think in Singapore the, the government is open to these kind of you know partnerships and, and help companies. Um, so so definitely we're, we're actually talking to them to the environmental agency. Um, So in, in them, them helping us to like kind of go to the market, but also how uh, helping them to become themselves sustainable because like, government is a big organization itself. Um, so. Okay. Our business wants to help other businesses use products that use resources more sustainably, cause less pollution, um, produce less waste, but we also want to make profits. And we are in the early stage of our business, so we have a lot of questions over how much um, our customers would actually be willing to pay to switch from their existing products to more environmentally sustainable products. So we'd like your help to help us uh, think through this uh, challenge. Um, so, so here, we've given you six uh, products that you might like to consider. Products that could either be used by businesses um, as SMBs, offering to the customers, um, or products that maybe individuals will use. So they address two of the markets we're looking at, the B2B side and the B2C side. Yep. So this, this is our question we're asking you. How much are businesses or individuals, depending on the product, willing to pay to switch to more environmentally sustainable products? And the products we've um, listed here that we hope we can maybe use as case studies are first um, a food tray that maybe a cafeteria might use, bamboo straws that maybe cafes might offer to their customers instead of plastic straws, um, plates that a caterer could use instead of um, paper plates or plastic plates and so on. On the B2C side, some of the products that we've... Um, What's B2C? Mm. Um, business with customers. Okay. So on the B2C side, some of the products that we like to offer include um, cloth diapers instead of disposable diapers, um, bamboo toothbrushes instead of the normal ones that you use, and environmentally friendly shampoo. I mean, some of the questions that we've been thinking about related to the key question include um, how are businesses and individuals currently trying to um, operate or live more sustainably? So first question you have is um, with the existing products that are not, not as sustainable, how much are they currently paying? If they're buying sustainable products, um, what are they currently buying and how much are they paying? and how much of a premium are they maybe paying over non-sustainable products? What do our customers think sustainability means? So how do, um, when, when you say sustainable, how do they define it? Um, specifically environmentally sustainable, but also other aspects of sustainability. And where do they currently go to buy these products? We're also trying to think about how um, these customers are going to switch 
um, from non-sustainable products to more sustainable products and what the factors they will consider when they do so. So, for example, what, what's the benefit to the customer if they do switch? Um, is, you know, beyond cost, is there, what are the motivating factors that will help them switch? Yeah. So, besides that benefit, which may be tangible or non-tangible, um, what are the costs they might have to pay to, to switch? You know, how much more will they have to pay in terms of price or maybe other factors? Um, and then, balancing this, these, you know, where does balance lie? How much do the costs versus benefits weigh out and how, how does it affect their decision? Um, yeah, the third question, there are many products that businesses or individuals could buy, right, if they wish to go sustainable. Which are the ones um, they are more likely to, to, to switch first? So is it like shampoo or is it um, toothbrushes or is it something else? Which is easier for them to make the switch? Um, and, yeah, and, and why, why are they making the switch with these products first as compared to other products? Yeah. And then... When you, um, once you have this information, what do you plan to do with it? Like, what will it translate into in concrete terms? Yeah. So I think with that information, then we'll we will take the information and figure out how how we're going to encourage our customers to switch, make the switch. So what are the kind of benefits that we would try to market to them to encourage them to switch? Um, what are the costs that we will have to lay out for them clearly? Um, that, so that they understand what it means for them to switch and then yeah, which products we would try to offer first instead of others. So I think those are the key strategies that we want to employ um, with this data and, and, yeah, and also eventually a big question is like how much can we charge? How much can we um, charge so that we can actually make sales and that we actually remain profitable? So yeah those are some of the questions we have. Any questions? But the, the platform in itself is not selling the product, right? The, the company themselves are selling the product. Or, or are you also involved in selling it? We, it, it's kind of a case by case basis. So we, we, might be, we might be taking orders, then asking the supplier to fulfill the order, or we might be stocking some products. Um, in our warehouse and then um, delivering them when um, an order is made. Is that a question? Um, yeah. yeah. So it kind of depends on the supplier. Sorry. And how then do you have the power to set the price with the other businesses? Do you talk to them and work with them to set a price that... The customer or supplier? The supplier. The sustainable supplier. Well, I mean... So I, I, two, two things. One, we select the uh, supplier. So if we think, for example, oh, that product is priced too high, then first we can just look for cheaper alternatives to keep to look for it, or, or negotiate with the supplier to figure it out. And we think that this product is too great to for price. I mean, your product is great, but the price is too great for price. Or we can reduce the margin. Maybe we find cheaper transport, you know, to, to reduce the cost. Because often these guys are, are you know, in, in India, China, Indonesia, Europe, the US, so maybe today these, these things are maybe flown by air, maybe the solution is, okay, maybe we just bring containers to, you know, cheap transport by sea, uh, to, to kind of reduce the price of the, uh, the food. Yeah, I mean, so we're taking a commission of our supplier, and if our supplier chooses to charge us a certain price, there's not much we can do to go below that. Yeah, so that's our constraint. The supplier, in the end, the supplier decides the price, but you, you know, have conversations yeah. with the supplier about that. And then it sounds like your revenues are coming from commissions that are made off of the sales. Of it. So essentially, you share some of the revenue yeah. with the actual supplier, and that's how, as a business, yeah. you're going to make revenue. Yeah. Am I right? That's one of the main ways, yeah. Do you have other sources of revenue? Um, in the future, maybe our own, our own products. Um, consulting, what was the last one? Um, additional supply services. So that, let's, let's say, for example, again, to come back to the previous question, if, if we see that one product is, like all suppliers are, are too expensive, maybe we just try to work directly with the manufacturer and kind of do like a brandless product that we can sell and not 
thing that we will do is once we know we're becoming really good at understanding what sustainability, we can also work with like milk nationals and say, okay, how can you actually make your milk, your whole big production and plants more sustainable? Yeah. So what we offer suppliers is increase in customers, increase of sales, and hopefully that's an incentive to help them lower the price as well. I think, yeah, so the main, the main question there would be how much more, um, how much would a customer be willing to pay for that product over what they're currently using and what are the factors affecting their decision? So would, um, yeah, so besides price, would knowing how much um, environmental impact they're having affect the decision? Um, would knowing that the product has been checked and curated affect the decision? Things like that. How easy it is to buy a product, for example? Would that make it um, easier for them to switch? Like if they could just you know, click online and they get a delivery next day, would that help? Things like that. So we're, we're not, we have some idea, but we're not too sure what factors our customers would consider. So we want, we want to better understand that as well. And um, would it be okay if as part of that, so they come up with that information, okay, here's what people are basically willing to pay, here are the factors that drive their decision to make a switch. Um, if they then also present some kind of a solution that they think might work? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think we'd really like it if you could get some first-hand information. Um, so, so talk to talk to people if you can. Um, if you can't, I, there might be some literature out there that might help. I think that would be useful as well. They, they'll have to talk to people. Right. Yeah, so that's part, part, part of the project is, is getting out of the building and doing interviews. And, uh, you know, so that's the whole model that we use in AT Entrepreneurship is the same model we will use here. Um, it's the basic idea is that the basic idea is that you can't really solve a business problem unless you get up and talk to the people who are actually involved. You can't sit, there, sit, sort of sit in a classroom and try to solve a problem. So for sure, you guys, so part, part of this will be uh, you getting out of the building and doing interviews after school and, and so forth and so on. And then I think what they might, they'll probably need some guidance um, let me some guidance in regards to, uh, you know, who to interview, what businesses they might want to go and talk to, to get to that, talk to Mr. Ho in our cafeteria, or, 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 or where you guys think that those, that the information you need, where you think it might come from, mm -hmm. so they can seek those people out. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 so I think there are several types of customers. There could be like also consumers, like, like us. Could be like really you know the cheaper cheaper outlets, cheaper F and B outlets, for example, like a coffee store, can be like more fancy places like coffee to like hipster coffee places or a restaurant. Uh, yeah. It could even be like general companies. Some companies, organizations. Uh, and so maybe the, the best would be to identify a few uh, people or companies in every kind of segment and then talk to them. And maybe then you can also see a little bit different. Yeah, so you can look at the product um, that you've chosen or been assigned and think about what that product replaces um, most commonly. 
and from there figure out who the customers are. And you feel free to talk to us if you'd like you know, some guidance on this. Um, can we try to uh, appoint or pair groups with products? Yep. Uh, would, yep. Um, Are you going to sign them or can we choose? We can choose. Can choose. We'll, we'll, what has to happen for the choosing, okay? What has to happen through the choosing is it has to be fair. Um, and also, you need to cover all, it's, it's these three, right? No, it's mm -hmm. six. Oh, six. six. Yeah. So how many groups do I have? Oh, we got our six groups. Can I get his group pick first? No. Um, <laughs>